This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, November the 7th, is a quarterback who will be coming up, up roses in the next Super Bowl. The Super Bowl that is coming up in six days' time. He is from the University of Georgia. Number one overall selection by the Detroit Lions. And he's in the top 20 in pass attempts, completions, passing yards, and passing touchdowns. And was the fastest quarterback to 40,000 yards. He was the primary starter for the Lions from 2009 to 2020, helping the Lions do well. Unfortunately, Stafford was traded to the Rams. And now, ironically enough, he's in the Super Bowl with his team, the LA Rams. So anyway, he is Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford was a pretty good quarterback coming out of high school, and he went to college and enrolled at the University of Georgia. The Bulldogs were decent. They had some good quarterbacks like Eric Sire and Fran Tarkenton in their system. But anyway, he became the first true freshman to start for Georgia since Quincy Carter in 1998, and the first out of high school to start since Eric Sire in 1991. Stafford's In his first season, got Georgia to the Chick-fil-A Bowl, or the Peach Bowl, if you will, and beat Virginia Tech. He threw more receptions than touchdowns, but he still, you know, did okay. In fact, in his sophomore season in 2007, he beat Florida, Auburn, and Georgia Tech, which is the first time Georgia has defeated all three of those rivals since 1982. Thinking Georgia and Auburn have a rivalry? They actually do. And Georgia and Georgia Tech, obviously. Stafford helped Georgia crush Hawaii in the Sugar Bowl. But Hawaii somehow managed to get into that bowl. Anyway, Georgia had 11 wins, the best since 2002. In its third season, he was a preseason Heisman candidate, if you will. He did okay. He got Georgia in his sophomore in his uh, junior season to win nine games and cap and qualify for the Capital One Bowl. Well, they call it now the Citrus Bowl, but it's the bowl, the famous bowl before the Rose Bowl on ABC slash ESPN. Anyway, they beat Michigan State, and he was named the Cap One Bowl MVP. He was three and zero in bowl games and six and three in rivalry games. So Stafford decided to forego his junior season, enter the NFL draft. And it looked good. Lots of people said that Matthew Stafford was definitely the number one pick. And Detroit had the number one pick. Crazy, their donut for 16 season. They needed a quarterback. They got Stafford. So anyway, Stafford would be the line starting quarterback heading into the season, becoming the first rookie to start in week one since Greg Landry, 1968. Wow. He did not do well. He threw three interceptions. He threw his first touchdown pass in game number two against the ME2 Kevin Johnson. And in the third game, Detroit finally ended their losing streak. Their 19 game losing streak against the Redskins. I'm sorry, the Commanders. I guess I'm going to call them that. Anyhow, Stafford did fantastic and all that. He had a separated shoulder in a famous game against the Browns on home turf. But he came back and threw Touchdown pass as time expired. With 422 yards passing, a rookie record and all that. Anyway, Stafford had a knee injury, but he had 2,267 yards, 13 touchdowns, 20 interceptions. When he started for the Lions, he was 2 and 8. Without him, the Lions sucked. They were 0-6 without him, so they ended up 2-14. Stafford, unfortunately, would injure his shoulder in the season opener in 2010 against the Bears. That famous loss that Calvin Johnson thought he had a touchdown catch, but apparently didn't. Stafford would come back in Week 8. and would have to have surgery for an AC joint repair and a clavicle shaving. Clavicle shaving? You can do that. Anyhow, the Lions were 1-2 when he started. But surprisingly, we're 5-8 and eight without him, which uh, was better than most things. Lions had high expectations because, obviously, Stafford came back from injury. 
and Stafford surprisingly led Detroit to three wins when trailing by at least 17 points. That's nice. And then Stafford on the final day of the regular season in 2011-12. Threw for 5,000 yards in a season. Getting 520 passing yards against the Packers in a 45-41 loss in Week 17. So yeah, he was the third, well he was the third in the 2011 season with Brady and Breeze. Stafford almost got the passing yards record, but it was picked off. If the 37-yard pass had been successful, he would have had 557, which would have beat him Norman Brockwood's record for most yards in the game. Stafford helped the Lions win 10 games, which meant that the Lions could make their first playoff appearance since 1999. In the wildcard round, they lost to the Saints. Despite Stafford throwing for three interception or three touchdowns, he looked very good in all of that. Unfortunately, though, to us twelve, he really struggled. But he got his contract extension with the Lions in twenty thirteen, and the Lions didn't do so well. Twenty fourteen, they bounced back, winning eleven games getting them into the playoffs for the first time in a while. Stafford would face Dallas in the wild card round. And the Lions had a 27 lead. And the Cowboys scored 17 on answer points to win. However, there was controversy as the Lions were winning when Stafford threw a pass to Brandon Pettigrew. And the ball hit the linebacker on the back. But they called pass interference. All that. But it was reversed. Doesn't make sense though. Stafford, the next season, would not do so well. Started at 0 and 5 in lines for 7 and 9. Stafford would hit the 30,000 yard milestone in the 2016 season. In the 2017 season, he had an extension that made him the highest paid player in NFL history at the time. So the Lions were above 500, but they didn't make the playoffs. Stafford would have a few good seasons and all that. November 2019, he got hurt, and he missed his first game since 2010, ending his streak of 136 straight starts, biggest season starts, the sixth longest by a quarterback in league history. Stafford would have non-displaced fractures in his upper phoretic spine. 2020, he did fine for the Lions. 4,084 yards, 26 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So, that looked good. Unfortunately, though, on March 18, 2021, Stafford was traded to the Rams. In exchange for Jared Goff, a third-round pick, and two first-round picks. So, Stafford would make his Rams debut on Sunday Night Football against the Bears. And the Rams won the game. And Stafford was NFC Offensive Player of the Week. In Week 7, Stafford played against his former team, the Lions, but at SoFi, where the LA Rams play. So Stafford thrown through, through for 334 yards and three touchdowns on a win. Stafford helped the Rams win 12 games in the season. And tying Kurt Warner's record, team record for passing touchdowns in a single season. In the wild card, Stafford took care of the Arizona Cardinals quite easily. And then in the divisional round against Tampa, the defending Super Bowl champs, he beat them 30-27. In the NFC, and in the NFC title game, he beat the Niners 20-17. to It was close, though. And the Rams will play a Super Bowl 56 in front of their home fans at SoFi Stadium against the Cincinnati Bengals. Can Stafford get a, a Super Bowl ring? It would be kind of awkward for Detroit fans because, you know, the one season he leaves Detroit and then he's got a Super Bowl ring. How cursed could the Lions get? Anyway, his career mark in the regular season is nine games below 500, if I may say so. And he's thrown for 323 touchdowns, 161 interceptions in the regular season. The postseason, he's 3-3. Three three. Well, he has had three postseason games with the Lions, 
but didn't do so well. But he's thrown for six touchdowns, one interception this year, which jumps his numbers to ten touchdowns, passed in four interceptions in his six postseason games. So, anyway, NFL records. He has the most passing touchdowns in a single game by rookie quarterback with five, tied with Greg Bulbit. This must be, like, way back in the 1950s. Maybe. Jamie Woods, the, the Sean Watson of Danny Jones. The youngest quarterback to get five touchdown passes, 21 years, 288 days, breaking. I don't know who he broke the record, but November 2009, that famous game against Browns. Uh, first player in NFL history to complete 60% or more of his passes in every game, 2015. Most games with at least one touchdown pass in a season, 16, which ties the record. Well, now 17 games. Most consecutive 350 yard games, 4, tying Drew Brees. Most passing yards getting thrown without a touchdown pass, 443 yards against the Falcons in 2012. Most passing or attempts in the season, 727 in 2012. He's the fastest to 20,000, 25,000, 30,000, 35,000, 40,000, and 45,000 career passing yards. Most fourth quarter comebacks in a single season, 8 in the 2016 season. That's amazing. He has many Detroit Lions. Records, he has the Rams touchdown pass record while well, he's tied Kurt Warner's mark. And most passing yards, 4,886 and completions, 404. At Georgia and Stafford meet a cheerleader and married in 2015. They have four daughters. Four daughters. Man, that's amazing. But Kelly Stafford, well, Stafford's wife said she had a brain tumor April 2019. She went underwent surgery. And Stafford helped her recover and did pretty well for her, herself. And she's still alive. It's still remarkable how good she has it. And how good we should have it too. Go Rams. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.